Namo Bajaya, Namo Amitabaya. Hello, everyone. So, someone asked, can we prevent bad things from happening? So, I think there are two aspects to this question. So, if we understand the law of karma, we believe the law of karma, you reap what you sow. And if you want more good things happen to you in your life and less bad things, then we should try to practice good deeds, right? such as the 10 good deeds. Uh, the five precepts, ten good deeds. So precepts are actually not to restrain us. It's actually to protect us, protect us from bad karma. So through observing the five precepts and to practice the ten good deeds, we can cultivate more wholesome karma. So we talked about what's karma before, right? Karma means intention, actions through our body, speech, and mind. So if we want to have good karma, good things happening in our life, then we should practice good deeds through our body, speech and mind, the 10 good deeds we discussed before. But does that mean if we practice the 10 good deeds, then absolutely no bad things will happen to us? No, we also talked about it before, right? Law of karma is very complicated. Even if we practice a lot of good deeds in this life, but we could have done a lot of bad deeds in our past lives. And the time for the bad fruits may only be mature in this life. So we talk about why sometimes bad things happen to good people. Right? Although they practice good in this life, but in their past they could have done a lot of evil deeds. And the fruit of those evil deeds only got mature in this life. And the fruit of the good deeds they practice in this life may only get mature in the next life. So for the karmic fruits to mature, there is also a time period. So just because you practice good and you are practicing the Dharma doesn't mean that no bad things will happen to you. Uh, we see every day uh, shit happens. But to practice Buddhism, it's not about controlling uh, the situations or the environment or what other people might or might not do to us. Uh, we can never really control about other things, other people and the situations. But what we can control is our attitude when we face those situations. What we can control is our thoughts. So it depends on what you define as bad things. Uh, maybe your boyfriend breaks up with you, you get a divorce, uh, etc. Maybe you lose something you really love. I, all this, we can treat them as lessons in life, valuable lessons in life that teach us about impermanence. So living in this human existence, there are just inevitable sufferings. Uh, the Buddha talked about the eight types of sufferings, like birth, sickness, or age, death, separation from loved one, not to get what you want, etc. All these types of sufferings we can't really avoid. So bad things will definitely happen, but what we can do is to choose our attitude when we face those situations. Not to think it as a bad thing, but treat it as a lesson about impermanence. I Treat it as a lesson about the Dharma. So the Buddha told us there is indeed sufferings in life, and attachment to all this will bring us suffering. Why? Because of impermanence. Right? All these things are illusions, unreal. In Buddhism, what we call illusions, unreal, means that they're not permanent, they're not unchanging. So if they're always changing, constantly changing, and impermanent, it's called illusions. Attachment to illusions, things, people, will definitely bring us suffering. So we can treat all these so-called bad experiences as valuable lessons about the Dharma. And we can change our attitude when we face those situations to avoid suffering. How to avoid suffering? So to be mindful of Amitabha in each and every moment of our life. If the so-called bad things happen, maybe your boyfriend breaks out with you, whatever, you just amitofo, right? Be mindful of amitofo. Ah, impermanence. Don't need to be attached. Amitofo, amitofo, amitofo. Right? Amitofo means infinite light and life. If we can keep this magic mantra in our mind, 
in each and every moment or in most moments in our life, then doesn't matter what happens to us. Uh, we are still in this frequency of Amitabha, this highest universal energy, universal frequency of Amitabha, infinite light and life. Uh, nothing can surpass this. Uh, this is our perfect enlightened Buddha nature as well. If you can tune into this energy, how to tune? Uh, to be mindful of Amitabha in each and every moment or in most moments of your life, then it doesn't matter what happened to you. You are not affected. Why? Because you are mindful of Amitabha. Uh, you are not attached to these illusions, to these dreams. You are not falling into the trap of this dream of illusion. And sometimes people are like, yeah, I understand all this, but I just can't help. You know, I'm still very much attached. I suffer a lot, even though I know I all it's impermanent. I'm a Dharma practitioner. So why is that? It's because your practice is not strong enough. Dharma is not just theory. It's not mere talks. If I'm just talking here and not practicing, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't work. Right? What's so special about Dharma and Buddhism from other religion? Right? Buddhism is actually not a religion. It's a path. It's a practice. Right? Buddha gives us all these tools for us to use. So we need to follow the practice so we can transcend suffering. If you only understand the theory and you don't practice, or if your practice is very weak, then you can't really transcend the suffering in your daily life because our karmic force is very strong. So you need a very strong practice to counteract our old habits, right? the habit of easily falling into negative thinking, into negative thoughts. So you really need strong practice. So the three learnings in Buddhism I precepts, meditative concentration and wisdom. Through observing the precepts, I morality, it gives rise to meditative concentration. It's much easier for us to focus. I, through keeping the mindfulness of Amitabha, I continuously, it can give rise to meditative concentration. And through this meditative concentration, and you're not easily affected by other people and other things or what's happening outside of you and inside of your mind. You're not affected by all these delusional thoughts. You know they're unreal, so you're not attached to them. It doesn't mean that you don't have delusional thoughts. Right? We all have delusional thoughts. But if you have a certain degree of meditative concentration, then you are not affected by them. Right? You just focus on Amitabha. And through this meditative concentration, it can give rise to wisdom. So. Even if you understand this in theory, you are a Dharma practitioner, but if your practice is not strong enough, then you can easily fall into the trap of delusion. That's why we really need to keep the constant mindfulness of Amitabha. How to do that? You can set up a fixed practice in your daily life and also just whenever you do in your daily life, still keep the mindfulness of Amitabha. Right? It, it doesn't require so much of your logical thinking. You can still be mindful of Amitabha in your daily life, in many things you do. And tune into our daily Nianfo YouTube life to help you keep the mindfulness of Amitabha. I remember our practice is every day, not only every day, it's moment to moment. Whenever we are not aware, we can easily fall into the trap of delusion. So really try to be aware of Amitabha in every moment of your life or in most moments of your life. May you be happy and free from suffering. Namo Amitabha, Namo Amitabha Buddha.